Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, all of you. Come on in the room, come in the room, come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. It is time for our morning devotion. Time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. It is time for us to magnify him for he is great. He is powerful. He continues to do some great and mighty things for all of us. Good morning. That's right. Wake somebody up. Let them know that we are on. Yeah, that we came to bless the Lord. We came to magnify him and admonish him for his greatness, his faithfulness toward each and every one of us. For he does not run out. Good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. He does not run out of goodness. He doesn't run out of mercy. He does not run out of grace. He doesn't run out of favor. He does not run out of love that he has for us. Good morning to you, Sister Glenda. He does not run out of what it is that we need to sustain us for our very lives. Good morning to you, Sister Donna. Listen, I feel Jesus already in this room. Good morning to you, Sister Africa. So good to see you this morning. That's right. Let somebody know that we are on and we are all the way live. Good morning to you, Sister Jennifer. Sister Missy, good morning to you. God bless you. Thank you for letting me know that you are here and you plan to be a participator in the word of God. Good morning to you, Sister Terry. And not just a spectator. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn, because I need all of you to help me to teach this word on this morning. Good morning to you, Sister Nimby. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning meditation. Because good morning to you, Sister Phyllis, because I'm mighty afraid, good morning, that all of us need this word. And because we all need this word, glory to God. All of us, yeah, we all going to have something to say. Good morning to you, Sister Karen. So good to see all of you this morning. Yes, as we embark upon another week into 2022, the Lord continues to bless us and heal us. Good morning to you, Sister Barbara. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer because I want to get into what the Lord has for us. Good morning to you, Cousin Tamika. Just right this morning. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God, because you are an all-encompassing God. You are an all-knowing God, an all-powerful God. And Lord, we are so grateful to you, God, for just waking us up this morning, for Lord God, allowing us, God, an opportunity to think on you, think on those things that are good and lovely and pleasing and pleasant. Oh God, we just thank you for an opportunity, Lord God, to yes, dwell, dwell, dwell into the word of God that we might know more and have a better understanding of how we are to please you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, as we continue, God, in the word, we continue in our faith towards you, oh God, that we know, God, there is nothing too hard for you, oh God, but we recognize that without faith, it's impossible to please you. So thank you, Lord God, yes, for increasing in our faith, for stirring us up, God, in our in our mindset, for stirring up our gifts, oh God, that we may use them, Lord God, not for our benefit, but for your glory, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, yes, for this morning, for the people of God that have joined us right now for this right now word. And we thank you, Lord God, that you will impact their hearts, their minds, God, their lives, their families, the environments around them, oh God, that things will be cultivated for the better in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I pray for clarity of mind, of speech, O oh Lord God, that all that we say and we do, God, on this morning will be pleasing in your sight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And we bless you, God. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Sister Sally, good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Miller. Good morning to you, Sister Gloria. Yes. Sister Marilyn, good morning to you. God bless you. Sister Nicole, good morning to you. God bless all of you. Sister Sherry, good morning to all of you. Thank you all for joining this Monday meditation. Brother George, so good to see you this morning. It's so good, yes, to be a part of the kingdom of God. It's so good, yes, to be with other brothers and sisters who also have the same journey that you're going on. Listen, the same purpose and plan that God has for their life, and that is to bring them to hope, bring them to an expected end, to bring them, yes, to bring them greatness and bring prosperity in their lives and, oh, bring healing and health. Yes, glory to God. Oh, I see you all this morning. Good morning to you all to give me some energy this morning. Yes, glory to God. Listen, last time we were together. I know I told you I was going to finish about Gideon and those 300 up, uh, those 300 soldiers that defeated the Midianite army. And so there was one last point I wanted to make. And as I was going to make that last point, glory to God, the Lord's uh, touched my heart. So the last point I was going to make about Gideon and an army, y'all know he got down to 300 men, those 300 men who were not afraid to fight, those 300 men that were not afraid to get in the battle, 300 men who recognized, glory to God, that they could be transformed to do something great in the body of Christ, not only in the body of Christ, but also in the earth realm. In all of us, we've been transformed by God to do something great. And so I talked about, I'm going to, I'm going to finish it because I said I would, 
but the Lord has given me something more powerful because even at that third point that I'm going to make about Gideon in that army, good morning to you, Sister Cynthia, there was something that came out of that because oftentimes, oh, glory to God, let me get, let me finish Gideon, Gideon in that army. So the first thing I talked about, glory to God, was making sure that we appreciated those things that are around us that were different, appreciated the differences in people. And sometimes people of God, we don't appreciate the differences in people. We want everybody to be just like us. Good morning to you, Sister Linda. We want we want people to walk like us and talk like us. And we want them to think like us. But my God, where is the cake? If you if everybody gonna put the same kind of sugar in it, you gonna put all sugar in a cake? No, you need some flour, you need some sugar, you need some butter, you need some eggs, you need all kinds, you need some vanilla, you need all kinds of the ingredients in order to make the cake. Hey, Sister Rose, you need everything. You need all different pieces and parts, glory to God, to make the thing good. And so therefore, I don't want everybody looking like me. I don't want everybody acting like me. Good morning to you, Sister Marsha. I don't want everybody sounding like me. I don't want everybody walking in lockstep, glory to God, because sometimes somebody has a different idea or a different thought. I'm not going to talk about Gideon again, people of God, but sometimes we don't understand, my God. I see you, Sister Nora, that sometimes somebody has a different thought or a different idea about what it is that's going on, glory to God, around you. And we've got to be open to having those different thoughts. Oh, Lady Lucretia, we got to be open to having those different ideas about what it is that somebody else is bringing to the table. Glory to God. Sometimes, oh, I got to get out of here though. But sometimes we look at other people and we want to be like that. We want to be like them. But listen, those people are looking at you saying, I wish you were different. I wish you had a different thought or a different idea. Because all of us, listen, that are trying to be transformed for greatness, all of us recognize that we don't have it all. And we may act like it. We may act like we all that in a bag of chips. But deep down inside, we know that we don't have it all. And so we're looking to others to give us different ideas. And we're looking for others to give us, come on, different um, 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 energy. We're looking for others to bring different things to the table so that that cake can be good. Glory to God. That was the first thing. The second thing, glory to God, that we have to accept who we are. Accept who God says that we are. Listen, we talked last night. Oh my God, we had a wonderful session on knowing your worth. And when you understand who God has created you to be, it doesn't matter what anybody says says you are. It doesn't matter what the devil has told you you are and what you cannot be or do. It doesn't matter what your boss, your mama, your teacher in the second grade told you that you would never become. When you understand that God says that you are the righteousness of God. When you say, my God, yeah, 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 you are the seed of Abraham. When you understand what that is and what that is all about, then you recognize that your worth is not tied up in any man or what any man can say, but only in what God has already told you to be. You've got to accept the idea that God has given to you. Yeah. And when God said to Gideon, you are a mighty warrior, that's all he needed. Oh yeah. He came into the battle afraid. He came in with some apprehension, but when God put that identity on him, Gideon knew that he could win the battle. God has put an identity on all of us, people of God, that lets us know that we can win the battle. Oh yeah. He said you were joy. Yeah. Joint heirs of Jesus Christ. That means whatever the Lord has, you have that glory to God. You have that same thing, people of God. Oh, yeah, that ought to make us rise up, not rise up in pride. And oh, my God, but rise up in humility that the Lord placed that clothing on us. He's placed the clothing of righteousness on us, that clothing of favor on us. Oh, yeah, that cloak, that mantle. He's placed it on us. Man, you powerful. You powerful woman of God. You're powerful man of God. And he's given that to you. And that third thing that I was going to talk about last Monday that I'm going to talk about just for a second today. Day, is to act upon the authority that God has given to you. Yeah, we've all got authority. Matter of fact, glory to God. When in the very beginning in Genesis, he said, I'm giving you dominion, dominion over everything that creeps on the earth, that flies in the air, that swims in the, in the sea. He said, you've got dominion over that. But listen, sometimes I think we feel like that we don't have any power over anything, which is what gets me to my point today. Yeah, act on it. Gets me to my point. The Lord has given us such great and mighty things, but yet we don't act on it. Yeah, so don't just don't just talk a good game. Be about it. Be about be about your father's business. Be about it. Be about it. And as I was preparing for this, I, I heard the Lord speaking it Himself. Yeah, in Luke two and forty nine. The Lord was asking his, his, his mother, what, why, why, are you, why are you looking for me? Why are you looking for me? 
He said, don't you know that I got to be about my father's business? He said, I got to be about it. And that's the model that we all need to be following. This was, this was the young Jesus. This was the young Jesus. He, this, he was young. He's like, he said, I know what my assignment is. And how oftentimes do we say to people, I'm walking in the plan and purpose that God has for me. Well, or I'm trying to find the purpose that God has for me. Oh yeah, God has a purpose that he's given to us clearly in the word of God. Now, yeah, we have a we have a uniqueness to the purpose that God has for us, but he's clearly laid it out in the word of God. And all we got to do is begin to walk in that purpose that he has for us. Yeah, we we don't we try to figure out so much what God is doing, but the Lord is saying to his mother as the young Jesus. He said, I don't, I don't got a lot of time to do what I need to do. And so I've got to be about my father's business. He said, listen, why are you looking for me over here? Glory to God. And a lot of times, people, we are in the wrong places. You know, why are you looking for me? I hear Jesus saying, mama, why are you looking for me over there? When, when you got to know that I have to be somewhere else. And sometimes people of God, we're out of position. We are out of position and we should be somewhere that the Lord has placed us. But yet we're somewhere else doing what somebody else has called for us to do, asked us to do instead of doing what the Lord wants us to do. When we, But we, oh, we're over there talking about what the Lord said, but we're not doing it. Instead of us talking about the people of God, we've got to be about it. What was the Lord saying when he said to his mother and his father, you know, I, I can't hang out with y'all. I got to, oh yeah, I got, I got to go and I've got to teach. I've got to learn the things that I need to do. Because after he did that, you, you understand that the Lord then himself, he, the Bible lets us know he increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor, the Bible says, with God and with man. That's found in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 52. He he was coming into, yeah, the realization of who he was. I said that about uh, about Gideon, um, accepting who you are and then acting upon that authority. That's just what Jesus did. Jesus knew that he was the son of God. He knew that he was the savior of mankind. He didn't have time to be hanging out with his mom and them. People of God, you ain't got time to be hanging out with cuz on them. You don't got time to be hanging out with the girls when they, oh, you ain't got time to be hanging out with the fellas. You got to be about what it is that God has sent you out to do. You got to be about it. So Jesus recognized, glory to God, that he was coming into his true identity. Yeah. And I can hear him saying to his mother and them, don't, don't you know I got to be in my father's house? I've got to be, ab I've got to be about it. I've got to be about my father's business. Yeah. Because you recognize this. When Jesus was born, the Lord proclaimed him right then. You are the son of God. And when he was born, my God. And so now when Jesus is of age, he's claiming his identity for himself. People of God, we've got to claim our identity. Yeah. For ourselves, And then act upon the authority that God has given to us. And so it's just as Jesus knew when the Lord proclaimed him to be the son of God, he knew that he had a mission that he had to accomplish. And my God, that mission meant that first of all, he had to learn of the things he needed to do. And then not only learn of those things, he had to go out and teach and preach so that he would be the savior to the nation, people of God. Listen, we need to stop talking about what we're going to do. I said that the other day, to stop talking about what we finna do and get about the business of the father because we recognize every Sunday. Sunday we go to church that a man or woman of God is up talking and teaching us about something. But wouldn't it be wonderful that instead of them talking and teaching us about what it is that we ought to be doing, that they begin to admonish us about the things that we are doing. Glory to God. Begin to admonish us about the love that we're showing. Begin to admonish us about living in harmony with one another. Begin to admonish us about how we're rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, begin to admonish us about my God, how we're weeping with those who weeping about how we're blessing those because we've been such a blessing that the Lord has given things into our hands. Wouldn't it be so wonderful, my God, to see, my God, then we're being exhorted because of the things that we've been doing in the body of Christ, not because we want to get um, accolades and glory for the things that we're doing, but glory to God because we're walking in the plan and the God and purpose that God has for our life, people of God. Wouldn't it be awesome, my God, to hear the words of Jesus 
being spoken prophetically over the platform saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Wouldn't it be awesome, my God, my God, that we, and when we hear the word of God, yes, um, um, in the scriptures is saying, don't just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. Wouldn't it be awesome, my God, just to hear that, yes, you are a doer of the word, but continue in the doing. Don't grow weary and well-doing. My God, for the Bible says, in due season, you are going to reap if you don't faint. My God, in due season. So you're recognizing there are some things that are going to happen in your life, some things that you're going to receive just by virtue of the Lord being good. My God, there's some, there's some things. Oh my God, good health. Don't you want to experience the health of God? Don't you want to experience, my God, the prosperity and wealth of God? Don't you want to experience, my God, what God has given to each and every one of you? My God, the Bible tells us just to, just to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, that's in James. I see you, Sister Nimby. James 1 and 22. Just not deceiving yourselves, the Bible says. Because the person who, who is the doer of God's word, oh yeah, you embody everything that the Lord stands about. Who is that person? Huh? And you, you want to say, Pastor T, you know what? Well, I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to find my passion. I'm trying to find my purpose. Listen, the word is what's in the word of God, the Bible. Who is that person? That person who is one who is slow to anger. That person is one who is quick to hear the word of God. That person is one who treats his brothers with love and compassion. That one is one who is not to shun a brother or sister when they're speaking well in their life, when they're speaking the things of God in their life. That person is the one who is the doer of God's word, who bears the fruit of the spirit. And what are those fruit, my God? They are love and joy and peace and long suffering and kindness, my God, and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That's found in Galatians. 5 and 22. You can read that for yourself. But when you do that, God is glorified. So why is that not our purpose? My purpose, glory to God, is to walk into the, in the fruit of the spirit. My purpose, my God, yes, the, the mission, the assignment that God has for me is not only to develop and, uh, uh, and, and to catapult women into their plan and purpose that God has. Come on, not only is it to do that, but it is to myself to walk in that same purpose, walk Walk in that same love and walk in that same long suffering and my God, walk in those same glory to God, goodness and kindness. Because, because when we become doers of the word, listen, when we just not, oh yeah, sometimes we, we uh, talk the talk and we don't walk the walk. But when we start walking the walk, come on, people of God, we develop a hunger to do what God wants for us to do. We develop a hunger, my God, to, to feed the hungry. We, de we develop a hunger to clothe those who are naked. We develop a hunger, my God, to comfort those who are broken hearted. My God, we, we develop a hunger to satisfy those who are not satisfied in the Lord. And I'm telling you that is there is no greater satisfaction, my God, than to be used by God. And I'm talking about what's your purpose? Come on and hear somebody. You, oh my God, hell, I might have seek it. Your purpose is to be used by God and to know my God. Yes, as oh my God, as it said in Timothy 4 and 7, that, that you have fought a good fight and, and you have kept the faith. Glory to God. But you gotta know that you can't just be a hear of the word of God. You've got to be a doer. You've got to be one glory to God. That is not just talking the walk and the talk and the talk, but you are walking the walk. Glory to God. Because how many of you know, it don't say it in the Bible, but people say it all the time. Talk is cheap. My God, I don't, I don't want to pay for your talk. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't pay for your talk. It's the walk I'm talking about. And sometimes people of God, listen, somebody might say to you, what are you doing? And why are you doing so much? And Oh my God, I, sometimes you moving too fast for people, but you, they say you're moving too fast. But what I want to ask the question is, am I moving too fast or am I moving too fast for you to keep up? Sometimes people can't keep up with you, people of God. And, and because they can't keep up with you, come on, they got things to say. They want to put your mouth, their mouth on you. But I want you to know, people of God, the Lord is speaking in this hour. And the thing that he is speaking in this hour is, come on, you just can't talk about it. 
You can't talk about what you're going to do. You can't talk about the goodness of God. You can't talk about how you're going to bless somebody. You can't talk about the love that you have for God. You've got to walk that walk, people of God. And if there are others that are around you that can't handle how you're moving and how you're shifting in and out and, and how you're positioning yourself, glory to God, to where the Lord wants you to be, it isn't because you're moving too fast, glory to God. It's because you're moving too fast for them. You, they can't keep up with you. And why do I say that? Because I talked about, oh my God, the other night, uh, that God does not move in our timing. Oh yeah. He said, listen, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, but because my God, I can't move too fast, Mr. Tamika. I, come on up. Oh, I see you, Lashonda. You got to get them out of your way. As a matter of fact, they go, oh my God, listen, you got to leave them sometimes behind. And, and I know sometimes people of God, we don't want to leave our loved ones behind. We don't want to leave our friends because they've been friends with us since we were six years old. They were lived in the old neighborhood with us. They went to kindergarten up to high school with us. Glory to God. Some of them were our roommates in college. And my God, we've been through a lot together. We've been through hell and high water together. But somehow, my God, our paths begin to take a different turn. They begin to take a different shape. Glory to God. And, and because of that, they didn't understand where God was taking me. My, there were some things, glory to God, that was happening in my life that, that made me understand my true identity in God. It, it made me understand that God had given some things to me that I needed to act on. My God, there was, he told me, my God, that who I was. And I began to believe that people of God. And when I believed, my God, that oh, that, that there was nothing too hard for him. But I believed that, that I could do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And when I believed, my God, that when he set me on a mission, that I didn't have to know everything, that he was going to qualify me for that thing. I recognized that I could keep on moving, that I could move on. And so for those that were saying I'm moving too fast, and for those that were saying, my God, you're doing too much. Or oh, that's my kids say, Mama, you're just doing too much. Am I doing too much really, or am I doing too much for you to be able to keep up? Because as Jesus said, I've got to be about my father's business. I got to be about it. I can't just talk about it. I got to be about it, about it. I got to be about it. I've got to move in the realm of where the Lord has taken me to. I've got to shift my God when I see the water. Oh, glory to God. When I see the water getting troubled, people of God, I've got to step my foot in the water because that's when I know that the Lord is getting ready to bless. And that's when I know when the Lord is getting ready to heal my God. I can't, my God, be sad, hanging out, my God, on the corner, listening, wait, listen to the talk, my God, listen to the talk of the town. I can't be hanging around, participating in the gossip of the day. I can't be hanging around, my God, listen, talking about my brother or my sister behind their back. I, I've got to do what the Lord has called for me to do. The Bible tells us, my God, that we've got to keep the commandments of God. Yes, it does. It say it. We've got to know. It's, it's in order for us to know him. We've got to keep his commandments. As a matter of fact, he says, in order for us to love him, we've got to keep the Lord's commandments. Glory to God. So that order for us to do that, we've got to walk. Glory to God to walk. For those of us who claim to live in God, yeah, if we live in him, we move in him, we, we breathe in him, we've got to do what the Lord did. Glory to God. We, it, it's not an option for us to sit back and say what I'm getting ready to do. If we want to be in his image, if we want to walk like him. If we want to do the things like him, we've got to be transformed into his image, transformed into his likeness, transformed into his holiness. And what is that? Blameless character. I know it's something that you don't want to give up. Oh yeah, you don't want to give up that alcohol. You don't want to give up that side chick. You don't want to give up that man on the side. You don't want to give it up, people of God. But I'm telling you, when you do that, you will show the Lord, first of all, that you love him enough to do what it is that he called and commissioned for you to do. But not only that, you'll be able to be transformed to receive the effective power that you need, that the Holy Spirit will be able to indwell in you. Oh my God, I, it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 18, uh, that the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and that by the power of God, you will be enabled to do some incredible things. I'm talking about incredible things. Who is ready for some signs and wonders to appear, my God, in the earth realm at this time? 
time. We thought the signs and wonders and miracles were just for back in the Bible days, but people of God, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, and, and Jesus said, when I leave, listen, you're going to be able to do greater things. Why greater? Greater because I'm sending the spirit of God. Greater, my God, because I'm sending the comforter. Greater because I'm putting the anointing of God on you. Greater, my God, because, listen, there's more of you, my God, to do what it is that I'm placing my spirit in. And therefore, you cannot be just hearers of the word. My God, the Bible says, yeah, you've got to do what the word says. You've got to walk the walk, people of God. Yeah, you've got to talk the talk, my God. And I know we've heard that so many times, but we've heard it and it's just glossed over. We've listened to the preacher, the man or woman of God, and we've just said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my God, we've got to get to a point. And I believe that if we did right now, many of our churches that are sitting empty, my God, the people of God will begin to come back if we would just understand that the Lord wants us to start being doers. He said, stop talking about it. Listen, he said, talk. I can hear the Lord saying, talk is cheap. All you're doing is talking, just moving your mouth. Glory to God. My daughter, granddaughter told me the other day, my, she said, lovey, don't say it with your mouth. I said, well, how am I supposed to say it? She said, don't say it with your mouth. Don't say it with your mouth. I don't know if she was telling me to be quiet or what she was telling me to do, but she said, lovey, don't say it with your mouth. And, and I understand now what she was saying. Don't say it with your mouth. You got to say, oh my God, you got to say it with your actions. Come on in here, somebody. My grandbaby said, don't say it with your mouth. Don't say it with your mouth, people of God. You got to show my God the world that the Lord lives inside of you. You got to show the world, my God, that you are a true believer in God. Don't say it with your mouth. My God, you, oh, I see it, LaShonda. You got to say it, my God, in action. You got to, oh my God, I found it. Oh, yes, glory to God. John 14, 15, it says, listen, if you love me, keep my commandments. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. As a matter of fact, glory to God. John 5, verse John 5 and 3, it says, this is the love of God to keep his commandments. And don't we know, my God, that the Bible says to us that God is, oh, glory to God, I got to get out of here right now. The Bible says to us that God is love. He is love. And so we want to talk about doing the things, my God, that God has told for us to do. If we want to talk about putting some action behind our words, putting some action behind the things that we speak, we've got to recognize that nothing, absolutely nothing is too hard for God. We've got to recognize, my God, that whatever the Lord is saying to us is what it is that he wants for us to do. We've got to come on. We've got to put some fire, yeah, behind our actions. Put some our some actions behind our words and put some fire behind our actions because sometimes my God it's, it seems like I recognize it may seem like your prayers are not being answered but the Bible tells us my God in 1 John 3 and 22 that whatever you ask you're going to receive from him why is that because you keep his commandments and you do the things that are pleasing in his sights so if you think about the things that maybe you think are you're not receiving that the Lord is not answering you on my God Think about those things that you're you're doing. Well, how are you keeping the word of God? Are you are you keeping what God has told you to do? Glory to God. We recognize, my God, that we are saved by grace through faith and not of our works. I understand that. But sometimes, listen, but the next verse is what we don't look at. And the Bible says in the next verse after Ephesians 2, 8, 9, number 10 says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So I know we can't be saved by works, people of God, but don't stop at that scripture. Don't stop there. Glory to God. Because the Bible says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. No, we're not saved by our works. We're not kept by our works. But the Lord is saying to us, those of us who are new creatures in Christ, you are born again, my God. You are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and hear somebody. He says, you got to do some good works. Don't just talk about it. You got to be about it. My God, why is it important? No, that's not important. 
important for you to be saved. My God, but as a born again believer, as a born again child of God, you are created in Christ to do good works. What's my purpose? What does God have me on this earth to do? Oh, yeah. Stop walking around talking about you trying to figure out what God has called for you to do. Stop talking about. I don't want to hear no more. Don't tell Pastor Tina no more that you're trying to figure out what your purpose is on this earth. What did God say? He said you are created in Christ to do good works. Glory to God. That's found in Ephesians 2 and 10. You write it in your Bible. Put it on your cell phone. Glory to God. Write it on your electronic device, your tablet. Don't tell anybody anymore what you're looking to do and what my God, what you trying to find your purpose in him. Because again, you don't trying to get stay saved. You, you, it doesn't save you, but being doers of the word, you do that because you are saved. When you are saved in Christ, you do what God has called for you to do. You don't walk around waiting for somebody to do it for you. You do, you do it, my God. Oh yeah, if I was in church, I would tell you to tell somebody to be doers, my God. Be doers. I know, my God. Yes, yes. Doers. When Luke 6 and 46, the Bible says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Oh yeah, we quit to say Jesus is Lord of Lords. He is my King. He is my Savior. We make it personal, but yet we don't do what the Lord says. Glory to God. When the Lord asks us to stop doing things, my God. And why is he asking us to stop doing things? He don't necessarily not asking us necessarily because of us. He's asking us because of the kingdom of God. The Lord is so much more kingdom minded than we are. I got to get out of here. He is so much more kingdom minded than we ever can be. He's looking at those around us that are watching us. He's looking at those around us, glory to God, that are looking to see what we are doing. He's saying, my God, listen to those that you are preaching to with your walk and those you are preaching to with your talk, with your actions, with those that you are preaching to. He's saying, I need for you to do something different. I need for you to do something different in the front of that young woman that's watching you treat how, how you treat your husband. He said, I need for you to do something different with that young man that's looking at you to see how you're treating your wife. I need for you to do something different when I see you, my God, around the people at the family reunion. When you know, my God, you were just at church. He said, I need for you to do something different. Glory to God. It's not for you. It's for those that are around you. I got to get out of here. Glory to God. What is it? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Let me get to the end here. God is love. My God, my God. Let's stop just talking about it. Let's be about it. Let's be about all the things that God has asked us to do. My God. Because in order for us to truly, truly value who we are and value who God has given to us to be, we have to strive every day to be like Christ. <laughs> We've got to strive every day to put those values in ourselves. And so when I think about the values that we want to be about, the thing that mostly comes to my mind, I see you, Sister Nimby, is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Bible says, yeah, we're going we're gonna to write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 4 to 8. We know the Bible says God is love. The word love, we're going we're gonna to replace the word love with God. God is patient. God is kind. God is not jealous. God does not brag. God is not arrogant. God is not rude. God does not seek his own, God's own advantage. God is not irritable. God does not keep a record of wrong. God is not happy with injustice, but he is happy with the truth. God puts up with all things. He trusts in all things, hope for all things, endures all things. God never fails. Glory to God. And so when we can see who God really is, then we can know who God called us to be. As we are made in his image. And so now when we look at that passage of scripture, and instead of putting God in the place of love, we put our own selves. And we say, I am patient. I am kind. I am not jealous. I do not brag. I am not arrogant. I am not rude. I do not seek my own advantage. I am not irritable. I do not keep record of wrongs. I am not happy with injustice, but I'm happy with the truth. I put up with all things. I trust in all things. I hope for all things. I endure all things. I never fail. How do I never fail? 
because God never failed me. And so when we think about all this, people of God, we have to understand that we've got to strive to be witnesses every day, but embody this every day. And let's stop just talking about it. Glory to God. Let's be about it. Father God, I just bless your name today. I praise you, oh God, for who you are. For you, God, are strong and powerful in me, oh God. But Lord, because you are strong and powerful, you created us in your image. So that makes us strong and powerful as well. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us the words to speak, Lord God, to defeat the enemy on every hand. For we recognize the weapons are forming against us. But I thank God that no weapon shall prosper. God, no dart shall penetrate the heart of mankind that shall turn them away from you, O God. And those things, God, that we are doing, purge us, O oh God. Purge us of iniquities. Purge us of sins. Purge us, O oh God, of the people, God, that are hindering a move of God in our life, hindering our walk. Purge us, O oh God. God, open up our understanding to who you are. God, help us, to God, to be strong and mighty. Yes, and powerful. Recognizing, Lord God, that we don't need an army of 30,000 to fight the battle and win. Lord, all we need, God, is a willing heart and mind. And you, oh God, Lord, thank you for never leaving the people of God, for never forsaking us, oh God. And thank you, Lord God, for continuing, God, to stand with us as we continue, Lord God, to hold you by the hand. Lord God, we thank you, God, for this word, and we thank you for the people of God that have heard this word. Lord God, I pray for those that are sick among us. I continue, Lord God, to pray, my God, for the families. God, I pray for reconciliation. I pray for unification. I pray, Lord God, yes, you'll continue to shield our sons, our daughters from the hand of the enemy, oh God. We come against, God, any murderous intent. We come against, God, strongholds of drug addiction. We come against strongholds of alcoholism, right? Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against it right now. As a matter of fact, we break it in pieces in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, we thank you, Lord God, that we are allowing you are allowing us, God, to step into the right generations so that generational curses, God, will not plague us. And as we start uh, rocking in the walking in the right generation, that's the generation of Jesus. Yeah, we are the seed of Abraham. And so I thank you, Lord, for that generation that gives us God blessings and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those that are sick among us, oh God. Pray that you will God lend God their hand of healing in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Touch hypertension, oh God, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Even that you are able, God, to heal cancer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Open blood vessels, oh God. Yes, that the blood may flow freely, God, through the veins to the heart, Lord God. And God, even those that, that may have got tumors and cancerous situations, oh God, I thank you, Lord God, that you are moving those right now in the name of Jesus. We give your name praise, God. We give you glory in the name of Jesus, oh God. Even skin disease, I thank you, Lord God. We come against it now. And Lord God, we thank you for healing in it in the name of Jesus. We bless you, oh God. And I pray for the bereaved families all over this land and country. God, give them comfort. God, give them peace. Help them to know, Lord God, that you don't make any mistake. But, but because of these things that have happened, God, you will comfort them in their time of difficulty. Lord, I thank you, God, for this word that have gone forth, oh God. And I pray the people of God will take it. They will eat it. My God, they will regurgitate it, Lord God. They will eat it again. That the word will be engrafted in their hearts that they may be changed in the mighty name of Jesus I pray amen and bless the Lord amen people of God listen this is a word I think you want to share share this word with somebody else because somebody is just talking the talk and then I walk in the walk they're waiting on something we don't know what they're waiting on something but I want my God you to share this word with somebody so they will get up and they will begin to do what God has called for them to do I love you with the love of Jesus you have a wonderful week you go in peace <music>